with yet another AFC team seemingly going all in to win this year or at least compete with the higher echelon of teams, which are seemingly concentrated in the AFC at this time. Ravens fans kind of panicking a little bit, myself included, uh, looking at the Dolphins acquiring Tyreek Hill a day after signing that real great offensive tackle Armstead and, and making all of us wonder, like, how are the Ravens going to keep up? You know, Do the Ravens need to keep up? I have been sitting on this DK Metcalf video for a while, so I figured I'd drop it now because there has been conversation by fans um, and even, I think, some football experts about the Ravens and other teams looking at getting DK Metcalf. Of course, the Chiefs being one of those teams as well, which kind of makes you shake your head. They can get rid of Tyree Kill and then just move on to the next one. Um, but in any case, what I did was I packaged some plays together to, to look at DK Metcalf from a from a film study standpoint in 2001. I tried to package these routes together by, by concept, so you see him running similar route concepts against different teams and how it works out. Um, you know, to speak on the DK Metcalf issue myself for a moment, you know, 6'4", 235 or 240, maybe his stats went down a little bit this past year in terms of yards and yards per game. A catch percentage, I think, went from like 65 to 58, whatever. You know, you can say he's not this or you can say he's not that. But what you cannot say, you cannot say he's not physically dominant and absolutely explosive with the football in his hands. And then you just got to figure out a way to get him to football period. Downfield routes, fantastic. Fade routes, awesome. I'm going to show you some slants, some China in routes, or what I call China in routes, some out routes. Let's get to it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you guys think of the film you know, study after the breakdown in the comment section, and also what you think of possibly looking at acquiring a guy like DK Metcalf. First series of routes is going to be slants, this is against the Colts touchdown. He's a demon in the red zone. He's an absolute demon in the red zone. Gets off hard, pushes this this safety or this nickel, really. Pushes him kind of towards the sideline, makes him think it could be a smash concept. You know, maybe throwing it to the pylon where number one is sitting and checking up. Brings it back into the, to the, to the hash on the left side. Look at the catch radius that he's got. Actually, let me refer to it a different way. Not catch radius. Look at the throw radius that the quarterback has to throw the ball to this guy. If there's no safety who can get in there, you can throw this thing pretty much damn near anywhere and he can go get it. That's a weapon that I just, I don't think you can quantify that ability as a quarterback to, to be able to throw the ball pretty much wherever you damn well, please. Now the next three plays is going to be him against Jalen Ramsey. And I think it's important to, um, to go over some of these. He beat Jalen Ramsey often in that game against the Rams. He drew one pass interference penalty against him. Probably should have drawn a second one. This is a touchdown. Now Ramsey thinks he's he probably thinks he's got help here by, by the safety. Smart design by Seattle. They've got trips to one side or actually bunch. Running back is going to release outside. Pulling this safety up. Maybe they shouldn't be playing this coverage. Maybe the inside backer should be running with the running back. But in any case, that safety pulls up, vacates all this space right here. Ramsey's got outside leverage, you know, probably thinking about a typical quarters coverage, at least in terms of alignment. Boom, touchdown. Simple, easy. Here's the safety right here that's going to go with that running back. And Russell Wilson's going to fit it in there perfectly. Nice, nice trajectory on the ball. Throws it up high for him to go get it. No chance for Jalen Ramsey to make a play on the ball. Big body, great athleticism, catch, easy play, even against one of the best corners in the NFL. Pass interference call against Ramsey here, obvious to me. Another in-breaking route, a slant. Really similar concept by Seattle. It's not a running back from the backfield doing this this time. It's a it's a number two receiver running out, clearing this safety out of there. So what that does is it frees up all this space in here for Metcalf to take advantage of. Big body, you can throw the thing inside to him. What's not to like? Maybe you know. Maybe people say he's not one of the top five receivers in the league, whatever. He's one of the top five receivers in the league from the 20-yard line in because you can throw jump balls and fades to him, back shoulder fades. All day long, it's going to be difficult for people to match up. Great ball, great location, indefensible play, if you ask me, against what, you know, obviously is an overmatched defender in, in any case for, for Jacksonville. Play action by Geno Smith. Throws this thing. I love the location. 
man, why would you not want that guy on your team? I understand that Lamar, you know, is a huge Marquise Brown fan, and a whole lot of us are, but hey, if it takes Marquise Brown to go get a guy like this, um, I think it will be at least wor worth at least looking at. A jump ball fade here, left hand side now. You know, doesn't, you don't even have to, this one's not even really thrown up. This is just, you know, should have been pass interference, but they don't need to call it because he catches it. I, f I feel like he plays through contact exceptionally well. Incredibly strong guy. Nothing, nothing to not like, if you ask me, looking at this film. Another fade down here on the left-hand side. Jump ball. Thrown a little high, if you ask me. You know, pretty much uncatchable. But you can do this stuff at any time with with him as the backside X. And what I mean by backside X is three receivers to one side. Imagine, if you will, Andrews, Bateman, du anybody, Duvernay, Brown, if we'll figure out a way to keep him, and then Metcalf backside here as the X. Uh, I can understand why Ravens fans would call for him. I'm kind of jumping in on that, that, uh, that hype train, too, in terms of wanting the Ravens to be more active in fr free agency. Of course, we don't have a ton of, ton of money out there, but in any case, let's transition to a different type of route, China in. I call it a China in. You know, other people have different names for it. Essentially, you're just walling, you're just getting to the inside of the curl flat defender or what would be the curl flat defender as he expands a little bit to go with this running back. So this defender expands a little bit to go with the running back, and Metcalf's just trying to get to the inside of him and sometimes sit or sometimes bring it back to the inside. Going to show you a series of these routes. Again, I call it a China in. You might have your own name from, from whatever system you're familiar with. The same concept, going to be wide open here against the Colts. Between the hash, the inside linebacker overcommits to him turning to the out. Metcalf brings it back in. First down. See the end zone angle? Here he is. This linebacker is going to overcommit. He's going to end up jumping to, to the turn. When Metcalf turns to the sideline, right here. Excellent job with this route by him. Untouched. That's another thing. Is It's difficult to play press coverage against him. Some people do it, and they pay the price for it in certain situations. China in still against the Titans. Same concept. This curl flat defender is expanding. So as he expands, Metcalf gets to his inside shoulder, and this is easy. Simple stuff. You can do this when you got a guy who can who can threaten down the field like this, kind of kind of forcing you to have DBs, you know, back off, backed off some. Tennessee doesn't play the Ravens like this, guarantee you that. Metcalf on the left side. There's the number two receiver who's going to run you out. He's going to pull that. What would be the curl flat defender if it was you know cover three? I'm not talking about what coverage it is, but in any case, Metcalf turns back inside. Easy catch, nice yards after the catch. Against the Packers, speed out. We're going to transition to a new type of route. A different type of route, I should say. Speed out, so there's no real cut, but catches the ball great towards the sideline. Gets the feet inbounds. Multiple, see this multiple times from 2021. Great body control for someone 6'4", 235. Um, those people that say, you know, he's not a number one or he's not this or he's not that, man, I don't get it. They go quads to the right. The offense is right, the bottom side of the of the uh, screen here. And this is Metcalf up to the top. Another speed out against Tennessee. Caught near the sideline. I mean, look what happens to this DB. I don't know who that is. I don't know why he's falling down. But I know the ball is thrown. It wouldn't have mattered if he falls down anyway. He has no chance to get involved in, in defending that play. It, those are routes that are there when you have this kind of size, this kind of downfield threat and ability. Those are routes that are going to be there. This is, I call this a slow out. He's pushing off slow because he's trying He's trying to make sure that Hayden knows I could accelerate at any time. So he's trying to keep him honest. We call it a slow out. You know, you may have your own name for it. But in any case, he's certainly not running full speed. Still able to catch the ball with, you know, a little bit of pressure on him from a guy angle-wise who might not have been able to touch him but at least could have, you know, interfered with the ball, maybe tipped it on the way in. Another out against the Steelers. This was there often. Look at the off coverage he's getting from this corner. He ends up fumbling this. You know, is there a little bit of a um, uh, lack of focus at times? M maybe. I know that's been the word on him, but I can't comment on that. I mean, I'm just 
watching the film, talking about the routes he has he has run. Let's transition to a new type of route, just an in cut. Typically, we're gonna get, we're looking at a 10, 12 yard in on these. Not necessarily a slant, but just an in cut. Strong, strong holds on to the football despite contact. Difficult to bring down. Huge fan, huge fan. Against the Steelers, motion away. Another in cut, same type of route. Takes a shot. I think this is intentionally thrown low by Geno Smith to kind of protect him and prevent him from taking a huge shot, which he still kind of takes anyway. Great catch. Strong guy. It, it, it goes without saying that he's strong. He shouldn't even say. I mean, he's just incredibly strong. All right, deep over route against the Packers. They're trying to put a little bit of pressure on him up here. Get a little bit of hands on, but he's just too strong. You're going to just shrug this off like it doesn't even happen. I mean, I, I, he seems like a freight train when, when you're a defensive back trying to deal with him and his size and his speed. So a post-corner fade, interesting route. Not necessarily fade to the sideline, but he's bringing it in and then back out. But it's not thrown over here. It's almost like a conservative throw. Trying to make sure that it's completed. Um, some people would say it's underthrown. I think that's where he's trying to throw the football. But in any case, Metcalf is so big, he could just go up and get it. The DB kind of gets turned around a little bit anyway because he's worried about he's worried about Metcalf running something in here. So he's got to kind of honor that. Brings it back to the fade. Easy stuff, man. Easy stuff. That's the thing. I know that, that it's a 58%. Um, catch percentage this year. So, granted, there's a lot of plays that were not easy because he didn't catch, you know, 80% of the balls thrown at him. I think it was Hunter Renfro was like 103 catches on 122 targets or something insane, you know, but a lot of them are underneath. Metcalf is is running routes downfield and threatening people all over the field. I think it, I think it's too much to ask of someone to – to catch that high of a percentage when they're threatening everywhere. They're playing in the slot. They're playing as the X often against what should be the other team's best corner. What looks like an over route, and then he just turns it up the seam. We would call this a lube route, but running an over route or in cut, and then safety jumps it. He reads it, brings it back up the seam, easy touchdown. Like I said, he's a demon in the red zone. Demon. I think he's a huge asset. Another jump ball. Ramsey's up here to the top this time, right there. So he's down here on, I don't even know who this corner is. It's a total mismatch. Isn't even really a, a exceptionally well-thrown ball. The DB just kind of takes himself out of the play, if you ask me, uh, and, and is undersized and, and beat athletically anyway. You would call that a, a genetic ass whipping, if you ask me. Poor video footage here, sorry. Stutter go in the snow game. I think against the Bears, video kind of tightens up a little bit. Love watching football in the snow. I don't know about you. Very difficult to play him like this with in his face. And there's a safety here now. But on the snap, for whatever reason, they're dropping one safety down and then rolling this guy kind of back. I understand what they're doing, but I just don't like it with DK. I don't think you can do it all the time with DK Metcalf backside here. Whether the safety, you know, whether whichever one it was, there's just no help for this guy at all. This is just a difficult thing to do against a guy with this level of athleticism, this type of speed and power. I don't play Madden anymore, but I'm guessing that DK Metcalf is a real problem on Madden. Beautiful ball. Going to finish up here. Last three or four um, touch. Last three or four catches or touchdowns. A little sail or sore motion, and then um, um, an out route to the pylon. Looks like he gets into me. I don't know if they reviewed this or not. Strong. Again, we had. I showed you a fumble earlier. Some people have talked about him losing focus. I guess at times, but when there's contact, he does not appear to lose focus. When there's contact, you know, or, or there's a real athletic move to make. And a guy right on you, he doesn't seem to lose focus as much. I, I would love to see this guy in a playoff situation, especially in a purple uniform. A couple more. Out route against, uh, I think, Jacksonville. Motion from across, to, from right to left. So I call that real motion, right to left. 
Great ball. Great ball. Great job getting his feet in bounds. You'll see it a little better from the end zone angle. Going to come across the screen right to left. Jacksonville's obviously playing man. They didn't have anybody who could play a man. Geno Smith looking, I mean, looking there the whole time. Look. Geno Smith didn't look anywhere else. Knew right where he was going with the football. Beautiful. Dragging the toe. He's a complete receiver. It would not surprise me in today's NFL if if this guy goes for 100, 110 catches at some point. You know, when he gets with a team that has a settled offensive situation. I know Russell Wilson was hurt this past year, and Seattle had other issues as well. Last play here, just what I think is illustrative of how physically dominant he is. You know, there, there's a good, there's a pretty good jam here. There's a pretty good jam here. I can't remember that that DB's name. It's a pretty good jam. Is that Williams? Metcalf fights off it. A little unbalanced. Off balance a little bit. And watch him shrug this guy off. Shrugs him off. It looks like to me. With his left arm now. And then goes and catches the football. Immediately. Next foot. Next step in the ground. Jukes. You know. Obviously a pretty high level corner. Marcus Williams. And then takes it to the house. You guys let me know what you think. Um, how impressive you think he is. I've been. Sitting on this video footage for a while. I've been intending to do player film studies and have done so for most teams. And, uh, you know, with the draft stuff, free agency kind of got in the way of some of that. But DK Metcalf, no matter who he goes to, would change the balance of the A. Well, let me rephrase that. DK Metcalf going to the Chiefs would absolutely change the dynamic and I don't know how they'd fit him in I guess salary wise he fits he probably doesn't fit for the Ravens I guess that's my guess but if there was a way to make it work certainly I think would even the Ravens out with these teams that are off to this fast start and and an interesting component to the AFC if you ask me is the Chiefs just got younger and they just got cheaper I meaning you know they're going to be able to draft multiple guys Two first-round picks, two second-round picks. I believe one or two-thirds and two-fourths. They're going to be able to draft a, a ton of young guys and fit them into a salary structure. I hope to hell they don't get DK Metcalf along with Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. And and clearly they're going to try to improve their defense. You, you guys let me know what you think, first of all, with the film study, with how I package these routes together in terms of putting the same concepts back to back to back so you could see them against different guys. I thought his play against Jalen Ramsey kind of revealed who he really is in some of those one-on-one -on -one situations because the Rams, as you saw with the safety coverage, you know, the safety taking number two or the running back, basically leaving Ramsey and Metcalf alone on that third of the field. And I thought Metcalf got be got the better of him plenty of times. Uh, it's not like he scorched him or anything for three touchdowns. That's not what I'm saying. But DK Metcalf showed you that he's capable of beating the unanimously recognized best corner in the NFL. Let me know what you guys think of, of how I package these plays together and what you think of DK Metcalf possibly moving to yet another AFC team searching or hunting for a Super Bowl.